Hey everyone, today I have the McFarlane Toys Cyborg Superman New 52 figure. This has been a very highly anticipated figure, and ever since we saw the prototype of the figure last year, there has been a lot of speculation as to what the final figure would look like. So, as we can see, this is the final product right here. It looks amazing, and I will be reviewing it in detail shortly. But first, let's go over a quick bio. Essentially, this version of Cyborg Superman is from the New 52 era of DC Comics, whereby Zor-El, who's a Kryptonian scientist and the uncle of Superman, becomes Cyborg Superman. Essentially, Brainiac was responsible for turning Zor-El into a cybernetically enhanced villain tasked with finding perfection in the universe. In regard to the McFarlane packaging, it looks good as always. Then here's the left side and the right side. At the back, we have an awesome picture of Cyborg Superman. And finally, here's the top, then the bottom. Alright, so this head sculpt looks very dope. As for the facial details, the flesh portions cover a little over half of the face, and the rest of it is cybernetic. In fact, you can see that parts of the upper jaw including the upper teeth and stuff, are metallic. And the same can be said in regard to the mandible, aka lower jaw, which consists entirely of exposed metal. Overall, both the flesh and metallic portions of the face are executed very well. Furthermore, the red eyes are a sinister red color, and there's a vertical line on each side of the face. As for the hair sculpt, it looks phenomenal. Overall, this is a very nice looking, well executed head sculpt, and the sinister look of it looks great in every way. The neck area has a large amount of detail. As for the Superman logo, it has some weathering going on. You can see traces of black wash all over the red and yellow logo, which gives it that bowel damaged look. And there's a small scrape on the upper right hand side of the logo, but it's minimal. As we turn our attention to the torso area itself, we can see even more detail. There's a vast amount of intricate detail on the exposed mechanical torso, and you can see all of the plating detail that composes the torso area. Furthermore, the silver areas on the torso also have some dark shading on them to simulate battle damage. Also, the waist area, along with the area below the belt region, has black wash shading. Essentially, the high level of detail is very dope. In addition, the red area of the belt looks very good. Overall, the torso body mold is very well built and it displays a phenomenal paint job. In regard to the arms, they too have that bowel damaged look, just like the torso. You can see the exposed silver metallic areas, which look amazing in terms of the cybernetic detail. In addition, on the blue areas of the robotic suit, you can see more of that black wash, which gives it a very damaged appearance. And on the shoulders, there's some dark shading. Looks good. In addition, there are spiked areas on the blue portions of the suit here on the right arm, which look great. The right hand is basically a large robotic claw hand, and you can see a myriad of different mechanical pieces that comprise this large hand. Overall, it's designed nicely and is not articulated. Likewise, the legs show excellent craftsmanship, just like the rest of the figure. There's more of that black wash pan application here on the legs, and the segmented areas on the legs look amazing. You can also see red areas located on the shins. The rubber cape is highly tattered, which captures that true battle damage look. It's very nicely designed overall. And as we look at the back of the figure, we can see an awesome level of detail. The back has that jagged appearance, just like the front of the torso. In addition, the spinal column is highly detailed as well. As for the accessories, here's a collectible trading card for him, 
with his bio at the back. Then here's the assembled flight stand. And now we'll begin looking at the figure in a series of poses. And after this pose, we'll look at the figure in conjunction with the flight stand. Then here's the figure with the flight stand. And here's another view of him. As we look at the articulation, we can see that the head moves up and down very easily. It tilts and he can look from side to side easily. Butterfly joints, the arms raise up to a 90 degree angle. Full arm rotation, bicep swivel, double jointed elbows, and a wrist swivel with a hinge. There's a diaphragm cut in the torso and he can pivot really well. He can only bend forward a little due to the belt piece. And he bends back quite far. There's a ball joint in the waist and he can pivot really easily there. Waist swivel. He can do a full split. The legs kick out forward very far. And they go back very far. Really good. Double jointed knees. And the lower legs bend back that much. The foot is on a rocker. The foot goes up that far. It goes down that far. Ankle pivot. And the front part of the foot goes up. So to conclude, Cyborg Superman looks phenomenal. This figure did not disappoint at all. Essentially, everything about the figure looks great. As we've seen, that head sculpt is amazing, as the red robotic eyes are intense, and the half-flesh, half-robotic design of the head sculpt looks dope, as it emits a very foreboding look. Furthermore, the battle-damaged robotic body with the tattered design looks phenomenal in every way. Another thing I like about the figure is the claw-like right hand, as it just exudes a sinister and powerful look. As for the articulation, the range of movement is very good. Overall, McFarlane Toys really did their thing with this figure, as this is a very solid release. Cyborg Superman looks awesome, as the figure's design fully captures the sinister, mechanized look of the villain. Thanks for watching. I hope you all enjoyed this video, and please leave a like and subscribe.